97 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel allegedly conducted a deadly aerial strike against Iranian proxies along the Syria-Iraq border. The Democratic-controlled U.S. Congress passed a resolution to rein in President Donald Trump's ability to launch a new conflict in the Middle East. Heavy rains caused major flood throughout the north and center of Israel, claiming the lives of five people. An unidentified aerial strike targeted a reported weapons convoy in Syria's Al-Bukamal region, adjacent to the border with Iraq. According to Iraqi sources, a number of aircraft believed to be Israeli launched a barrage of missiles toward transport vehicles and a warehouse belonging to the Iraqi Hasht al-Shabi paramilitary alliance of pro-Iranian proxies, commonly known as the Popular Mobilization Forces. According to the London-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, at least eight militia men were killed and dozens of others were wounded, including some in critical condition. While both Iraqi and Syrian sources insisted to TV7 that Israel was behind the attack, the latter refused to confirm nor deny its responsibility. The IDF spokesperson's unit reiterated to TV7 that it does not comment on foreign reports pertaining to its operational activities. It is important to report further that this morning's alleged Israeli bombardment was the fourth of such aerial strikes on Iranian-backed militias in Syria's eastern Al-Bukamal region within a time frame of less than 72 hours. Turning to Iraq, where a rocket exploded last night in the Dujail district, which is located some 50 kilometers or 30 miles north of Baghdad in the country's northern Salahuddin province. According to local police sources, the hostile projectile landed near the Iraqi Balad Air Force Base, where U.S.-led coalition forces are stationed. Thankfully, no injuries or damage were reported. It is important to mention that last night's rocket fire was the second incident in which projectiles were launched toward western housed installations since the Islamic Republic's ballistic missile attack that occurred during the early hours of Wednesday morning. In spite of U.S. President Donald Trump's assertion that Iran was actively standing down, an assessment derived from intelligence reports that claimed Iran instructed its proxies to seize any attacks on regional installations housing U.S. forces, Wednesday night saw two rocket launches toward Baghdad's heavily fortified Green Zone, where many foreign diplomatic missions are situated. One of the projectiles reportedly exploded only some 100 meters away from the American embassy. Thankfully, no injuries or damage were reported. Turning to the United States, where President Donald Trump reiterated that the assassination of the Iranian general Qasem Soleimani came in response to the latter's active planning of new attacks against U.S. embassies around the world. Speaking at a campaign rally in Toledo, Ohio, the American leader underscored that an imminent threat brought about his prompt decision to exercise what President Trump referred to as American justice. Soleimani was actively planning new attacks, and he was looking very seriously at our embassies, and not just the embassy in Baghdad. But we stopped him, and we stopped him quickly, and we stopped him cold. While well, Washington's Western partners voiced broad support for the assassination of General Soleimani, referring to it as a defensive American operation, U.S. lawmakers from the Democratic Party are demanding more information on the imminent danger the architect of the Islamic Republic's aggressive expansionist policy posed to U.S. interests. Meanwhile, in the U.S. House of Representatives, the Democratic-controlled House passed a resolution last night to rein in President Donald Trump's ability to launch a new conflict in the Middle East. American lawmakers voted 224 in favor to 194 against, mostly along party lines, sending the War Powers Resolution to the Republican-controlled Senate. The partisan vote reflected the deep divide in the U.S. Congress over the Trump administration's Iran policy and how much of a say lawmakers should have over the use of the military. Democrats accused Trump of acting recklessly and backed the resolution, while Trump's fellow Republicans opposed it. 
Today, to honor our duty to keep the American people safe, that is our first responsibility to protect and defend. We must keep the American people safe. The House will pass a war powers resolution to limit the President's military actions regarding Iran. Congress is reassuring our long-established oversight responsibilities as we mandate that if no further congressional action is taken, the administration's military hostilities with regard to Iran must end. I'd actually like to hear a Democrat speak to the 600 Gold Star families the Soleimani killed. I'd like to hear them defend that. I'd like to be here to defend Iran and their actions of burning an embassy, of killing an American, of killing thousands of civilians, even in their own country. But they're going to take our time today with something that means nothing. But yes, they will run to the mics, they'll get on TV, and they'll tell a little more fake news that it meant something today. The only thing today will happen It'll make Iran believe they are stronger. It'll make Iran believe they have allies in the House of Representatives. It is important to know that the fate of the resolution is uncertain in the Senate. In spite of a Republican majority of 53 mandates in the 100-seat chamber, at least two Republican senators, including Rand Paul of Kentucky and Mike Lee of Utah, have expressed support for the Democratic promoted measure. Turning to Tehran, where the commander of the Islamic Republic's Aerospace Force, IRGC Brigadier General Amir Khajizadeh, claimed that Iran's missile attacks on U.S. targets in Iraq were not meant to kill American soldiers, but to teach a lesson and stimulate an American withdrawal from the region. General Khajizadeh, whose presentation was broadcast on state television, insisted to the watching Iranian public that a large number of Western forces were killed in the IRGC-operated strike. ما همونطور که عرض کردم در این عملیات دنبال کشتن کسی نبودیم ولی خب به هر حال حتما در این عملیات تعداد زیادی ده ها نفر حتما کشته شدن حتما تعدادی مجروح شدن این رو آمارش خب حتما میاد بیرون دیگه General Khajizadeh further declared that the Islamic Revolutionary Guards had hundreds of missiles at the ready, which could result in at least 500 Americans killed within 48 hours. ما اگر قرار بود که دنبال کشته سازی باشیم کفش میتونستیم تو این عملیات طراحی کنیم 500 نفر کشته بزنیم دستش و اگر تو گام بعدی اونا جواب میدادن دیگه ما شرایطمون عوض میشد یعنی ما اگر مواجه بودیم با عملیات های اونها دیگه اون موقع ما تکلیفی بر حفظ جان نیروهای نظامی آمریکا نداشتیم در گام دوم و سوم من فکر می کنم ظرف 48 ساعت حداقل 5000 کشته ما میذاشتیم دست آمریکا The senior IRGC commander also seized the opportunity to level a warning toward the United States, emphasizing that it is in their favor to pack up and leave from this volatile region. Turning now back to Israel, where heavy rains have caused major floods throughout the country's north and center. According to the Israeli Meteorological Service, the heavy downpour broke a 51-year record of rainfall within a two-week period. The amount of rain has only been seen twice since measuring started some 80 years ago, in December of 1951 and in January of 1969. The devastating weather conditions have also regrettably claimed the lives of five Israelis that drowned in different flood locations, including two young residents of Tel Aviv that were caught in a flooded underground elevator. As heavy rains continue to drench the country, we urge the public, both Israelis and visiting tourists, to comply to safety instructions by local authorities. Thank you for watching us. Praying for the peace of Jerusalem as well as the peace and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan. Have a Erev Tov and Shabbat Shalom. We will see you again on Monday at the same time.